Hello, I'm Cyril Memoir and welcome to my new player's guide for Yixian. In this video, I will be introducing the Heptastar Pavilion sect, its characters, and some basic strategies you can employ to start winning games. Heptastar is a sect with some of the trickiest cards in the game, and can look a bit confusing at first glance. Once you understand the basics of the mechanics though, the sect is straightforward to play but is full of depth. There are two key mechanics introduced on tier 1 for the sect, hexagrams and star power. Several cards generate a resource called hexagrams. Many heptastar cards, and some side job cards, have either a damage range on them or a low percent chance to have a bonus effect occur. A hexagram guarantees you max roll these cards, either doing the maximum amount of damage the card can do, or getting the bonus effect 100% of the time. Each time your hexagram fixes a roll, the amount of hexagrams you have decreases by 1. As a general rule, you want to make a hexagram for each variable card on your board to maximize their impact. Star power and star points are intertwined mechanics. Your third and sixth card slot are star points. Any damage dealing card on your star points deals one additional damage per attack for each star power you have. Additionally, astral move cards have an additional effect when they are on a star point. There are cards that can turn other slots in your deck into star points, such as shifting stars. And if you turn a star point into a star point again, you will generate one chi. Post Strike is the third mechanic the sect has on tier 1. These cards have an additional effect after the first time you play them each fight. Aside from one character, these cards generally pair up with a healing theme that is introduced on tier 2, and the majority of these cards are defensive in nature so as to extend fights and allow you to benefit from multiple plays of the card. Lastly, the sect has several cards that are capable of inflicting a variety of negative status on your opponents. War and internal injury can aid your offense while weaken severely cuts your opponent's attack damage. Heptastar's tier 1 cards are very powerful, with Astral Move Flank and Spyro's Tail providing very high damage. Finding your chi source can be a challenge early, as Dotted Around and White Crane Bright Wings both require upgrades to make 2 chi. Focus on upgrading one or the other. White Crane will necessitate Earth Hex to maximize its damage roll, while Dotted Around can let you play Zhen Hexagram if you only play Spyro's Tail or Striding into the Wind as Hexagram Spenders. Focus on making enough chi and hexagrams to support your cards. Shifting stars can enable you to benefit from an extra star point for your astral move cards and star power, or even fix your chi in a pinch by playing it in slots 2 or 5. It is worth noting that the amount of hexagrams generated by a fully upgraded earth hexagram is the same or better than other hexagrams up until tier 4, and you can easily play a max earth hexagram for the entire game. Hexagrams are one of the most straightforward evolutions from a starting board, and one that should be considered if you find yourself with a fully upgraded Earth Hexagram early. Hexagram Form Aside is a continuous card on tier 4 that turns your hexagrams directly into damage. Combined with cards that spend multiple hexagrams in a turn, such as Dance of Dragonfire and Thunder and Lightning, the deck can inflict a burst of damage and recharge with Thunder Hexagram Rhythm. On tier 5, 5 Thunders is a high source of damage and effective hexagram dump with Thunder Hexagram Rhythm and Heaven Hex is one of the most powerful chase cards in the entire game. Heptastar's strong early game can often see it to tier 4 before it needs to spend many rolls, and the irreplaceability of the tier 5 cards can make stockpiling exchanges all game tempting. But if your destiny is under threat, find your cards on tier 4 and focus on incremental upgrades from there. The best hexagram boards can defeat opponents in as few as 3 turns, but 4 to 5 is most common. Star Power is the other end board that evolves most naturally from the early game boards. In this case, having early star power from a card like Dotted Around and extra star points from Shifting Stars provides a natural pathway into the setup. Starry Moon and Astral Move Hit on Tier 3 are cards that will often see play all the way through to the end game. On Tier 4, the chase card Astral Move Fly opens up the high burst potential of the board, while Astral Move Tiger is one of the best defensive tools in the game dealing high damage while severely limiting your opponent's output when backed up by star power. You will often find that even with Starry Moon and Shifting Stars, it is hard to play all your astral moves with your limited star points. The tier 5 card Polaris solves that problem, providing you with a chunk of star power and converting your entire board into star points. A star power board without Polaris has a very hard time keeping up with other endgame boards, so try to conserve some rolls for tier 5 if possible. 
Propitious Omen is the best star power provider in the game, assuming you can fulfill its conditions. One way to remember it is a level 2 Polaris on turn 1 will provide enough star power by itself to deliver star power from Propitious. Healer is a unique strategy that leverages the tier 2 card Stillness Chitadama to convert Chi to healing and outlast opponents. This build is very flexible and can incorporate tools from most side jobs into its options. Due to Stillness Chitadama being a tier 2 card, along with other restorative staples such as Imposing, and the side job cards Feed on Illusions, Sky Spirit Tune, and Cure Formation, you generally want to save rolls on tier 1 and spend as many rolls as possible on tier 2. A pair of Stillness Chitadamas is usually enough, but with less than 2 the build can struggle to outheal opponents. On tier 3, Revitalize is the ideal healer finisher, but it is not always necessary to win fights. Even a single stack of internal injury from Flower Sentient can be enough to defeat opponents if you can outlast them. If you can increase your max HP, you can even outlast your opponents till the time limit of 64 rounds without dealing a point of damage. Remember, highest HP wins. A lot of mid-game opponents will have no ability to handle this board, setting you up to save rolls through tiers 3 and 4 to find Great Spirit, Propitious Omen, Escape Plans, and high impact side job cards on tier 5. Tanshian is a character with a defensive slant who can nonetheless assemble some of the most offensively fierce boards in the game. She is an excellent choice for your first Hepta Star character. Tanshian's Study Hard draws an extra card for every 8 cards you absorb. This sets her up to be a very fast character in the late stages of the game. To maximize this ability, try not to combine cards you aren't planning on playing, but don't worry about this too much when you first start off. Only Traces is an excellent ability that solves the Heptastar Chi problem for you as soon as you break through to tier 2. The post-strike chase makes Tanshion favored in longer fights and cements her place as the de facto healer character. Birdie Wind does not do very much when you are not gaining HP on your turn, providing only modest defense against multi-hit attacks. You can take this if you are playing healer, but consider skipping it otherwise. Avatar of Birdshade is one of the better cheat deaths in the game. You should generally combine the only traces, as having only a single copy that chases will generally perform better than the two separate ones, even in a long game strategy like Healer. Cut Off the Mundane allows Tenshion to stop drawing tier 1 cards on tier 5 and heavily contributes to her monstrous endgame kit. Generally speaking, this ability is very good and almost always worth taking. Jiang Ximing has a high affinity for star power and astral moves, with several of his immortal fates interacting directly with the mechanics. His strong early game sets him up to save some exchanges for the late game and assemble high synergy boards. Strategize draws Jiang Ximing an extra card every turn. This allows him to assemble powerful boards very consistently, especially on tiers 1 and 2. The reduced cultivation growth part of the fate only serves to offset the extra cards, so don't worry about it too much. Astrology is a big boon to any board as long as you can play a hexagram on turn 1. This is usually hard to activate in the late game, so if you are interested in this effect, the generic fate Stargazing, which always provides 1 star power, will usually be better if it's offered to you. Starburst represents a high burst of damage as long as you have access to star power. It is usually better to combine the two starbursts and use it as the last 20 damage to defeat your opponent than to play them separate. This drops off very quickly in the mid to late game, so don't hold on to it forever. Heptastar Soulstat is the cornerstone of a thousand memes. There is an Exodia board built around using this ability to lock opponents down for as long as possible, but outside of that and a thousand shades of dubious permastone boards, this ability is only okay. Chasing into it is the simplest way to get good mileage out of this ability if you do take it. Don't try too hard to make it broken, it's usually not going to be worth it. Astral Divination Hexagram is a peculiar immortal fate. The main way to take advantage of it is to use the generated hexagrams with a Heaven Hexagram on tier 5 to play 5 Thunders in a Polaris Star Power board. Star Trail Divination also works as an enabler for this build, but it is generally too slow in the higher ranks of play. Yaoling is the speediest character in the game and can take advantage of her high cultivation to control the flow of combat with Heptastar's Disruption and play any of the sex endgame boards with ease. Innate Spirit Body draws a card every breakthrough, giving Yao Ling a total of 4 extra cultivation by the end of the game. The HP reduction makes Yao Ling a little bit frailer than most of the cast, but it is of minor consequence. 
Crimson Yarn Guard is a decent destiny saving ability and can help compensate for Yarling's slightly weak mid game. I want to mention that the tier 2 Immortal Fate Divination, which provides one hexagram at the start of the fight, is extremely good for Yarling if it is offered to you, and I would usually take that in this spot. Flame Flutter is the reason why Divination is so good for her. Flame Flutter is almost always worth taking and is a great mid game tool. Usually you will want to play this on turn 2 after a hexagram, but with a Divination you can lead on this to maximize the internal injury damage. Rotary Divination Hexagram is condemned by only providing 3 hexagrams. This can be a serviceable pickup if you are desperate for hexagram, but it is generally worse than the tier 4 card Flame Hexagram, which can at least be upgraded. I almost never take this fate, and it is rarely worth it. Lantern Spirit Awakening immediately draws a card, then draws an extra card every turn, providing one more cultivation every turn over your opponents. After a few turns, this will eclipse most opponents on speed, and by the end game, no one will be able to compete with you. You should always take this when you first start out. Yanchen is the biggest bully of the sect and directly benefits from defeating opponents. Yanchen feels unstoppable when he wins, but can struggle to catch up if his early game falters. He is uniquely positioned to play an internal injury board, but can play conventional strategies just as easily. Bloodline power is the cornerstone of Yan Chen's games. Winning early fights is important with Yan Chen, as drawing extra cards allows you to snowball your advantage into extra power to continue winning fights, and so on, and so on. Flames of Life is simply an auto pick. The initial cultivation lets you outspeed your opponents on tier 2, and the extra destiny damage powers up bloodline potential, allowing you to start snowballing in power earlier and faster. Ultimate Hexagram Base is a reliable source of hexagrams that does an excellent job until the late stages of the game. One hexagram per turn is perfect to power all early game Heptstar cards. Be mindful that from tier 4 you may need more than one hexagram per turn, at which point you may need to augment or replace this. Within Reach is a build in a card and makes Yan Chen the one character in the sect with a reliable internal injury build. The Musician side job card Heartbroken Tune along with this card are capable of dealing enough damage to win fights almost unassisted, but the slate of internal injury cards in the sect also pair well with this. Fury Thunder's main purpose is to chase into a 5 hexagram 5 Thunders. Backed by a little bit of star power from a card like Starry Moon, this can deal enough damage to defeat enemies without the rest of hexagram support, or can slot into a classic hexagram build for extra damage. Take this if you're playing hexagrams, but otherwise you can skip it. Wutze is the newest member of the Heptastar roster, and her unique fates give her access to some of the best star power boards in the game while also being able to access extremely powerful post-action boards unique to her. She can make endgame boards out of cards found almost entirely on tier 3, which is a great place to spend a lot of exchanges. Perfectly Planned is an extremely reliable and efficient source of chi, hexagrams and star power in the early and mid game. By playing this in slot 2, this will make a second chi by turning a star point into a star point again, giving you two chi to fuel your board. While you're learning the game, I would recommend absorbing this card when you no longer need it for the 20 extra destiny, but be aware of the extra 6 exchange options. Rest and Outwit is generally not worth taking and typically performs worse than just playing perfectly planned. If you do take this, remember to keep track of your chi and hexagrams to make sure you are amassing enough of both when you are resting. Best Choice asks you to sacrifice 6 exchanges at the point in the game when exchanges are at their most valuable to Wutsu. The upside of this Immortal Fade is surprisingly low impact. If you find yourself with no rolls on your tier 3 breakthrough, this can be worth taking, but generally should be skipped. Act Underhanded effectively allows you to spend a hexagram to activate the post action of a card on the first time you play it. Drag Moon in C and Hunter Becomes Prayer are two cards that are underwhelming without per strike but devastating with it. If you find the Immortal Fate Divination on tiers 2 or 3, then Act Underhanded and Drag Moon in C is a powerful opener that can chase into Hunter Hunting Hunter in the late game for one of the most explosive and strongest boards in the game. Taking Divination on tier 5 for 3 extra hexagrams propels this board to even further heights. Star Moon Folding Fan is a great card for star power boards, effectively making Chi a non-factor on Wulz's Polaris boards. 
You will generally still want to have a Star Immune or Propitious Omen to gain the star power from Star Moon Folding Fan and to have the star power necessary for the board to outscale opponents, even if you don't use the Chi thereafter. 